today. If you're a guest in at, we'll find you for all the regulars. Shake a hand or two. Tell them it's great to have them here today. Thanksgiving. <laughs> I love Christmas time. I love it because it's just uh, it's a really incredible spirit, really incredible, you know, to see all the laughter and smile on people's faces. But most importantly, it's about what it means. It's about the reason why we celebrate and what God did, what He did for each and every one of us. The Bible says that for God so loved that He gave. We read about Jesus Christ being born of humble beginnings and then we fast forward in his life and we we see where he gave his life upon a cross and that sacrifice that is so powerful for us and then he because he gave his life he gives us eternal life because see whenever you give gifts the gift of love continues to give over and over and over again there's no end to the gift of love and this song that we're going to do, it's, you know, it's not technically a Christmas song, but it is because it speaks about the love that came down from heaven, the love that, that came to all of us, the love that, that surpasses all the struggles in our lives. No matter what we're facing, no matter the heartbreak or the hardships, His love comes down, it comforts, directs, and it moves us where we need to be. So listen, as this song speaks about the power of God's love coming down to all of us. If my heart is overwhelmed and I cannot hear your voice, I hold on to what is true, though I cannot see. If the storms of life, they come and every road ahead gets steep, I will lift these hands in faith I will believe I'll remind myself of all that you've done and the life I have because of your son love came down and rescued me love came down and set me free I am yours I am forever yours Mountains high or valley low I sing out and remind my soul That I am yours I am forever yours When my heart is filled with hope And every 
rescued me. Love came down and set me free. I am yours. I am forever yours. Mountains high or valley low, I sing out and remind my soul that I am yours. I am forever yours. Sing it again. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. I am yours. I am forever yours. Mountains high, your valley low. I sing out and remind my soul that I am yours. I am forever yours. Thank you, God sending your son Jesus Christ thank you that love came down and didn't just come down and appear as a baby but through that life of that child God we, we have real hope through the life of that child we have a real future because God in this world this, this world tries to, to drain us of hope this world tries to drain us of the, the possibilities of what tomorrow may hold but Jesus you came to bring us life and bring it abundantly you came and and you lived in such a way that was sinless life. And because of that, we can have real life today. Thank you for coming down. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being gracious to us when we need it the most. For God, so many times we fail. We fall. So many times we are consumed by this world and we're deceived by the, the promises that it holds. But ultimately, God, you are the only one that can change and transform our lives. So we pray that God, you just speak to our hearts, challenge and change us as we, we remember how powerful you are. We remember how great you are and that you can do all things in our lives. You can restore marriages. You can renew lives, God. You can, you can renew finances. And God, you can do a healing work in bodies that are sick today. Thank you being our powerful God.
of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no That God, you are more powerful, you are greater than. Because of what you overcame, Jesus Christ, we too can overcome. Because of your sacrifice and because of your life that you lived, we are now overcomers through Christ and through Christ alone. So God, I pray today for those who are discouraged. For those who came to this place today, maybe they felt beaten down by life. Maybe they felt like they couldn't go on another day. That God, by that name, by the name above all names, by the name of Jesus, that every name, knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. That God, you would move upon them right now. Lord, that whatever their struggle is, whatever their hardships that they're facing, whatever is burdening their life today, that right here, right now, God, let your presence be so real. And let them know that, God, you deliver. God, you heal. God, you restore and you renew. If you're here this morning, you're going through a hard time and maybe facing an obstacle, would you just right now raise your hands all across this place and just call upon the name above all names. Just say, God, here I am, just as I am. Here I am, struggles and all. Here I am, shortcomings and failures. I am everything right here, right now. And I ask you, take it, change it, renew, restore, and heal. I thank you, God, for the power of your name, for the power of your presence. God, today, as your word comes forth, may it change our lives. May it be more than merely hearing, but God, may it be life-changing as we listen to the power of your word, God. May you heal those offended places in our lives. May you restore and renew. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. starting a new series talking about the ghost of Christmas past. Um, and what we're going to be doing over the next several weeks is we're going to be looking at Christmas is a challenging time for many people. 
uh, many things that happen in uh, our lives kind of seem to be magnified during the Christmas season, some good, some bad. Um, you know, it is truly supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, but unfortunately because of history and because of family and because of dysfunctionality, it can also be a very painful time of year. It can be a very hurtful or deep cutting time of year. And so uh, what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to do my best to try to help us work through how to enjoy the Christmas season, even though you may be haunted by ghosts of the past. Uh, the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about the first one. Next week, we're going to talk about the ghost of shame, that so many of us have done bad things and hurt people and maybe said things and maybe we're going into family situations that aren't the healthiest. And so we carry with us lots of different shame. We're going to talk about how to work past the ghost of shame. And then we're also, the last week, going to talk about how to work past the ghost of labels that, you know, if you grew up in a home, you're kind of known as a, maybe, a, a, maybe a, a thug or maybe you were a troublemaker or something like that. And so you go around grandma and grandma will tell you stories about what you did as a kid and label you as a, as a brat or as a, you know, a hoodlum or whatever. Um, and we're going to work out how to move past the labels that have been given to us over the years. So uh, today I want to talk about something that uh, quite honestly is, is something that I think a lot of us struggle with. If we're just being very real today, and that is the ghost of offenses, uh, being offended by different people and different things. So to start off here in the room, how many of you guys, just by a show of hands, uh, participate with me, a show of hands, how many of you guys would say that you know somebody who is easily offended, like they get offended at every little stupid thing that's out there, They're easily offended, raise your hands. They probably saw your hand just now, and they know you're talking about them, and they're, easy, they're offended. They're offended that you're talking about them, right? Uh, yeah, all of us know somebody uh, that is easily offended. It might be you. It might be somebody else. That, I don't know. But uh, how many guys would uh, admit that you yourself have been offended? Like, when you get offended, you don't really know in the time that you're offended, and it's kind of silly that you're offended by. But looking back, you go... That was really silly that I got offended by that thing. How many of you have ever been caught in that place where you're just silly? You got offended by silly stuff, right? Everybody raise your hands. Everybody raise your hands. All right, only 12. Okay, well, man, that's pretty good. Um, I, I, a couple of things that I think about is like, okay, driving. Okay, I was raised in St. Louis, and I was raised with crazy drivers. And uh, there is an unspoken rule that whenever you allow people to get over in front of you in, in driving... You do the obligatory thank you. Thank you. And it's only, if you don't do this, that's nerdy. You got to keep, you got the fingers like that. Thank you. Kind of like, hey, cool. I'm thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and you have to make sure they see it. And make sure they don't see, make sure they see the other fingers and not just the one that's sticking up prominently. Because uh, in St. Louis, they will, they will get you for that. Um, but, you know, you get offended because maybe they didn't say thank you to you, you know, and you get road rage about it. Or maybe you walk into a restaurant, you're the first one to go in, and you hold the door open for somebody, and they walk past you and don't say, thank you. You know, you get offended by that. Uh, how about this? You're talking with somebody, and you're in this conversation, maybe you're spilling your guts about, you know, something that's going on in your life, and you're sharing it all out, and they go, oh, yeah, just, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, what's, oh, yeah, really, oh, that's, that's hard. Now you get offended because they're not paying attention to some of you are looking at people. Don't be looking at them. That's you. Um, how, about, how about this? How about technology? Technology has done a very good job at making all of us very sensitive. Is it not? I mean, just very sensitive. We're just very sensitive, very fragile people. You know? I mean, Facebook or face crack, I like to call it. Face, face crack, you know, you, you finally get that picture that you, it's the, it's like the, the, um, uh, the, 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 the bunny rabbit of pictures. Like you can't find it anywhere. It's like the Easter egg of pictures. It's the family that gets together and everyone is smiling, uh, in a picture. That's a rare thing, isn't it? Isn't it rare to get everybody smiling and looking at the camera, right? And you finally get it and you put it on Facebook and you may have a hundred likes, but there's one person that you know looked at it, they didn't like it, and they didn't comment on it, and you get offended. I'm done. Right? We get offended so easily. Um, how about, how about snap crap? 
Snap crap is like the worst thing because here's what happens with it. People send out these snaps and, and you can tell if they've read it or not. And if they, if they, or if they've seen it and you don't read it, you see it. And if they see it, but they don't respond, what's wrong with them? They didn't respond in four or five milliseconds, right? What do you do? You see if they see it. Can you see if they see it? I don't really care what it is. I don't like it. It's snap crappy, okay? I don't understand it. And you got, you got instinct, Graham. You know, everybody, <laughs> you like that? Instinct, Graham, yeah. Uh, you have all these different things. And, and what it does, it makes people hypersensitive because what happens is we're so connected that we're disconnected. One for me that I know people get offended at me about because I've heard about it is if I don't say hi to them. Uh, I'll be walking through the church. I'm focused on something. I maybe, I'm, maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm praying. Maybe I'm just focused on what's going on. And I won't say hi to them, and they will hold it against me. Like they'll be mad at me, and I'm like, "What is? What's the problem? Like, you walked past me. You didn't say hi." And I was going to say, "Well, you didn't say hi to me. I should be offended at you." Right? We get so sensitive and so we get so offended so easy. And holidays just magnify this. Because guess what? Cousin Eddie's coming to your house this year. Every one of us have a Cousin Eddie, right? We all have those cousins that show up that we dread for them to be there because they, oh man, they are, they are, a few, they are short of some screws. They are, they are wackadoos. You know what I'm saying? You know who they are. We all have them. Um, if you don't have them, that's because it's you. <laughs> if you can't point to one, it's you. Uh, but we have them, and you know, you have the relatives that show up, and they don't bring any food, they don't donate any food or drinks or anything. But you know what they show up with? Tupperware to take home the food. You know what I'm talking about? They show up with Tupperware to take home the leftovers. They don't bring nothing, but by God, they're taking home some turkey and mashed taters. Then you have the families that, you know, they, they, there's, this, there's this family dynamics that I think goes on in every family, and that's the, the, the sibling rivalry of the kids, that, that there's this, you know, my kid's better than your kid, look how good my kid is, your, your kid, how you're raising your kids, you criticize kids, and it can cause hurt feelings, and I really think we need to go to, uh, we really need to transition into, um, off of Seinfeld, Festivus for the rest of us. And they had an area in the Festivus where it was the area of grievances where they sat around the table and they just screamed at each other. I really think that's a healthy thing to do. Let that, let that happen. Um, so many different things that come in and ghosts of Christmas past come in and ghosts come in and they haunt us and they deal with us. And so we have all kinds of things that press their way in. Uh, but then there's more significance. Some of those things are pretty trivial. There's more significance like betrayal, uh, deception, lies. Uh, maybe broken up home, maybe divorce situations that face this during this time of season. Lots of different things that go on during this time of season where um, we find ourselves dysfunctional in a very, in a very um, unhealthy, uh, toxic way. And so what happens is our Christmas that should be about celebration, celebrating Jesus Christ, that should be giving hope to the world, the season that is supposed to be the most joyful time, the most peaceful time, becomes the most chaotic, resentful, hated time of the year. This should not be. Why is it this way? Well, it's because the ghosts of our past come flooding in, and they haunt us, and they deal with us. Key thought I want you to take away today is this. Write this down if you're taking notes today. Key thought is this. Your life is too short. Your calling is too great to live offended. Amen. Let's say that again. Life is too short. Your calling is too great to live life offended. It is not worth the time and energy it takes to live offended life offended. Stand to your feet with me this morning as we read James chapter 4, verse 14. And here's the Bible. Do our Bible prayer today. It says this, I hold the hope of the world, the blueprint for life. I will read it, study it, and share it. God, help me. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 14 says this, what is life? What is life? What is life? Life is when you, why you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are what? Uh, a mist, 
A vapor, another translation says, here for a little while and then it vanishes. You are a mist that appears for a little while and then it vanishes. God, help us to be able to hear your word of truth and be transformed by it. Help us to live this Christmas season unoffended. Help us to live this Christmas season knowing that, God, you've healed us of those offenses in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Life is too short. Your calling is too great to live life offended. Life is too short. Your calling is too great to live life offended. Here's the truth. All of us are called to share the good news of Jesus Christ. All of us are called to tell the story of the birth of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus, but most importantly, the resurrection of Jesus. All of us are called to be the salt of the earth, to be the light in the darkness. All of us are called because we all have received the gift of salvation. And because of that calling, life is too short. Your calling is too great to live life offended because the fact is when we get offended, we shut down the calling in our lives. Proverbs 19, 11 says it this way. It says it is to a man's wisdom or to a person's wisdom uh, that gives him patience. It is to his glory to what? Overlook an offense. It is to the wisdom of God to overlook when someone offends us. It is to the wisdom of the person and patience that they give grace to those around them. Now, let me just say something right here. To overlook does not mean to act like it did not happen. To overlook does not mean that you just go willy-nilly and be like, okay, well, everything's good. Because it'll take time to get to that place. But to overlook actually translates as into pass over. It's to recognize, yes, I've been hurt. Yes, they said something. Or yes, they did something that hurt me. And yes, it cut deep. And yes, I am hurt. However, I'm going to allow God to help me pass over the offense. It is to not to, it is to our glory. It is, it is so that we can walk in God's presence every day. A famous quote says, uh, says this. It says, whenever anyone has offended me, I try to raise my soul so high that the offense cannot reach it. When I get offended, I try to elevate myself. I try to lift up my soul to the point that I will not stay offended. Life is too short. Your calling is too great to live life offended. But so often, we allow the offense to dictate our life so we can never do God's calling because we're offended by the reality of what took place. So I want to talk about two things today. I want to share two thoughts with you. And, and the first one is going to be a little bit of a smaller, the smaller offenses in life, not, not so big, not so great. And then the last, set, last part is going to deal with how do we deal with big offenses? How do we deal with, with some really deep stuff uh, that can happen in our lives? First thought is this, how to deal with uh, maybe a smaller offense in our lives. First one is this, God will help me when I'm, uh, God will help me get over being easily offended. God will help me get over being easily offended in my life. God will help me do that. Ephesians 4, 2 says this, always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of love, because of your love. So it says, be patient, be kind. It says, be humble be gentle because you have been forgiven of much. Therefore, forgive others. A person who cannot forgive, a person who cannot overlook offenses, you know what happens? They become bitter. They become angry. They become resentful. And they become people that you don't even want to be around. People that are, are, are infused with offense in their lives and they can't get over things, they just walk in rage. Because internally, they believe I deserve justice. 
And the fact is, none of us deserve justice because Jesus took every bit of wrongful abuse upon his life. Jesus didn't deserve punishment. Jesus didn't deserve death. Jesus did not. De- he, did, he lived a sinless life, yet he went to the cross and he was ridiculed and abused and he was punished. Paul tells us, be patient, be humble, be gentle, because God has forgiven us much. We had to forgive others. Famous quote that I always say, and and I kind of think this falls appropriately into this particular point. This is a quote that um, I forget where I heard it, but it makes so much sense, and I use it like in my in my uh, daily life because it helps me remind myself of who I am and who other people are. And here's the quote: It says, "We judge others by their actions; we judge ourselves by our intentions." So the the reason why the quote is so powerful to me is because so many times we observe people's actions and we judge them harshly, but yet we could do the exact same thing and we would justify our actions. We can do the exact same thing. We can talk to our spouse the exact same way that someone else does, but man, if they talk, oh, he shouldn't be talking to her like that, or she should not treat him that way, and yet we do the same thing. Why? Because we're justified by our position, but we're judging them by their actions. So this is what happens when we get offended. Someone says something or does something and offends us. You know what we say? They're jerks. They shouldn't treat me that way. And then we turn around and do the exact same thing. But guess what we say? Well, I had a bad day. They don't know what I've been through. They don't know what's going on in my life. So it's okay for me to be rude to the checkout lady. It's okay for me to be upset because because my life is so messed up. But they don't have a right. I do. We judge others. By their actions, we judge ourselves by our intentions. I saw it. Black Friday. <laughs> I saw it all around. It's not really Black Friday now. It's like it's Black Thanksgiving Day. You know, everything's open on Thanksgiving. I'm really ticked about it. So I went out Friday because I refused to go out on Thanksgiving Day. If you did... Hey, that's between you and Jesus and that checker that hated you for taking up their Thanksgiving. No judgment from me. I'm not judging you by your actions at all. (laughs) Uh, But, but, (laughs) you know, Black Friday, you know, five o'clock we're out shopping and checkers are, you know, they weren't the happiest people in the world, got to say, you know, but I always think about, and even not on Black Friday, but I always think about, you know, I don't know what's going on in their life. Uh, my job is not to, not to get offended by how they treat me. My job is to hopefully spread some light into their life, be the salt of the earth, hopefully bring a little joy to them, you know? And, uh, and so, you know, that's, that's what we think about. Rude people, always, everywhere. I mean, I, listen, for the first time in ever, I don't think we've ever done this, we went to Quincy. We usually are in St. Louis. Now, listen, Quincy is like a puppy show. If you, if you can't handle Quincy, you best not go to St. Louis because they'll chew you up and you'll be fetal in the corner at a place there, down there in St. Louis. They are rough, you know, but, uh, but we don't know where people are coming from. We judge, our, we judge others by their actions. We judge ourselves by their intentions. Here's how we need to change. We need to change that philosophy. We need to judge ourselves by our actions and give grace to people because we don't know their intentions. We don't know what went on in their world that they are at the place that they're at. So, number one, by God's help, God will help me get over being easily offended by silly, probably smaller things. Here's the big one. Number two, by God's help, I'm getting over the big offenses. By God's help, I'm gonna get over the big things in life. Now, let me say right now, being very sensitive to Everyone's at different places in this room. Some of you have had 
a horrible, horrible life. Some of you have come from abuse. You've come from betrayal. You've come from uh, situations of, of verbal abuse and, and maybe sexual abuse. And so these are, these, when I go into this, this particular area, I want you to, to know that I'm going to be sensitive and help you walk through it. Uh, I think sometimes what happens is um, when we are victims or when we are victimized by people, we then take on a victim mentality. Y'all hearing me? When we have been hurt, we tend to think, whoa, is everybody hurts me and whoa, everybody is against me. And we go to this pity party moment. And some of us, we don't go to a moment. We live in it. We live victim every single day. Because we have been offended by somebody. And I understand that that's a reality, but I, I want to just challenge you in your thoughts. That's not the way God wants us to live. God doesn't want us to live paralyzed by the past. He wants us to move with power into the future. And here's what happens if you have ever been hurt, if you've ever been, if you've ever been uh, uh, emotionally scarred, if, you, if someone ever said anything to you that was, was hurtful or, or cut deep, if, if something was ever done to you by a family member or by extended family member or by a friend in a, in, a, in a wrong way, man, it really hurts. It's painful. And I'm not trying to minimize because we've all had pain. Can we all just, can we all just get real? You remember I told you, Cross View is a, is a, is a, is a place of, full of mistakes that are only looking to Christ for his grace right? Y'all with me? So understand, I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching with you today. We all have been hurt. We've all been been kicked. And when we're down, we get kicked again. We all have felt the pain of, of loss and suffering in our lives. So with that being said, please don't think that I'm preaching from a higher loftier place. I'm preaching from right where we're all at. We're all hurting. We're all in pain. We all have something that cut us significantly. The difference is, what do we do with it? Two ways that people handle the pain and the offenses in their lives. First one is this. They rehearse it. Some people just rehearse it, replay it, relive it, reopen the wound. Some people rehearse it day in, day out. Marriages get caught in the cycle of rehearsing. What does that mean? That means, well, he said something that hurt me deeply, so I'm going to say something to hurt him deeply, and I'm never going to let him or I'm never going to let her forget it. Rehearse, 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 around and around and around and around we go, and then we can't ever figure out why we can't move to another place. We rehearse it. We have been taken advantage of in our past. We, we say things like, well, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've faced. You don't know the pain I have had in my life. And so we rehearse it and we say, when I was you know, 12, this is what happened. And when I was blah, blah, this is what happened. And we rehearse it and replay it all over, over and over and over again. So some of us are going to rehearse things. Others of us are going to do this one. We're going to release it. Amen. We're going to release it to the one who can do the heal. Uh, listen, me talking about it, me rehearsing it over and over again, do you realize that doesn't bring any resolution? That doesn't bring any healing to the problem? All that does is leave me victim. I'm the victim. I was wronged. And yet God is saying, no, listen, my son was wronged. My son was put through the abuse. If anybody could be a victim, it could be God. I'll let that sink in just for a moment. Now, we don't think God is a victim because, well, he's God. But do you realize, what would you do if a, if a group of people took your son who was wrongly accused and beat him and brutalized him and hung him to the cross and killed him? What would you do to those people? Hmm. But God, in his authority and his wisdom and his power, he knows Christ had to go through that in order for us to find true freedom. We can rehearse it or we can release it. Some of you are rehearsing the offense over 
and over again. You relive it every day. It's, it's trapped you. Offenses build fences. Forgiveness breaks fences down. Colossians 3.13 says it this way. It says, make allowances for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. How do we forgive? We forgive because we're reminded of how much he's forgiven us. I've said it often. I'm not going to have you, I, I rehearsed, I, I say this a lot. I'm not going to have you go through the motions of it. Just go with me on the journey. How many of you have slide? How many of you have, have cheated? How many of you have, have, have had thoughts about people that have been lustful and wrong? How many of you guys, how many of you today have uh, maybe stolen or maybe have had thoughts of stolen? How many of you have spoken against and you cursed God? How many of you guys have not kept the Sabbath holy? All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because we have been forgiven, because we have been given another chance, because grace comes in, we have to offer grace to those around us. Listen, if I can't forgive somebody for something stupid they said to me or some action they did to me, if I can't forgive them, the Bible says that God can't forgive us because it's hypocritical. It's the, it's the idea that I'm better, so I deserve forgiveness, but they don't. So many people are paralyzed with, with offenses and unforgiveness in their life. You're either going to rehearse it or you're going to replace it. My life is too short. My calling is too great. I will not compromise what God has for me just because I cannot forgive or I am easily offended or I'm offended. I will walk with grace. So the story goes like this. There's a story of a man named Joseph. It's kind of the closing story I want to tell you about. So Joseph, if you've been in church in a while, you've, you've heard this story, but I'll just kind of very briefly tell you about a man named Joseph, a young boy that uh, he was hated by his brothers, despised by his brothers, so much so that he was sold into slavery. Sold into slavery, he was taken through a major, major abuse. Imagine being betrayed to the point that you're sold into slavery. I mean, that's pretty, that's a lot of hatred from your brothers. And uh, sold into slavery, he works himself up and he gets to be, uh, work as a, uh, as a servant in a, in a home of a, a named Potiphar. The wife comes on to him. He flees from her. She accuses him of, of trying to solicit sex from her. And all of a sudden, now he's thrown in prison. Thrown in prison for many, many years. Um, he tells, he was able to give some insights to dreams of Pharaoh. He talks about the famine that's going to hit Egypt. Uh, all of a sudden, as it comes to pass, he's elevated from the prison to the palace, and he's now second in command of all of Egypt. He's over the famine and the food distribution of all of Egypt, this, this, uh, this uh, Joseph was. So Joseph one day is in his palace, and he's divvying out the food, and he's rationing the food to the people in the community. And in walks the brothers that betrayed him. In walks the exact men that are responsible for everything, all the hell he went through in his life, they're responsible for it. They caused it. They made it happen. And they walk in. Joseph runs away and cries, contains himself, he comes back. He takes off his, his headgear that they, they wore in those times, and it says that the brothers fell to their face <laughs> because if he wanted to, he could have them killed immediately. Second most powerful person in all the land. But instead, Joseph looks at these Men who messed up his life. They took everything away from him. He could be offended. He could have them killed. He could have them punished. He could do anything. And here's what he says. He says, get up. And he hugs them. And he loves on them. And he says this, what you meant for evil, God met, took and made it good. Hmm. Some of you today, you want to hold on to your pain. You want to hold on to your resentment. You want to hold on to your offense because you think you have the right. I owe this. This is my pain. I'm not going to let them go because if I let them go, they get off scot-free. I don't want them off scot-free. They deserve punishment. And yet God says, hey, every bit of punishment that they are going to have has been taken care of on the cross. No, no, no. Wait, God. 
I know people that have lost children to a drunk driver. They, they went through a season where they were angry. They went through a season where they blamed God. They went through the process of losing a child in that way. And one day, I know them personally, one day they woke up and they said, you know what? He gives and he takes away. And my son, my daughter was at a, was at a better place than they could ever be now. You know what? I'm not going to let it offend me that God took, that God allowed this to happen. I'm just going to trust that my God knows what's best. God begins the healing process. And, and, and these are people that, you know, whenever you used to talk to them about it, they couldn't even talk about it. Now they'll tell you the story of their child. They'll testify about who God is, how faithful he is. It is to our glory to overlook the offenses. It's to our glory to rise up and to be above it. It is to the glory of God that we give grace to those who deserve grace. And even those who don't deserve grace, we give grace anyway. Because forgiveness is the most powerful gift we can give this Christmas season. I don't know what you're going to go into this holiday season. I know that, man, in a room like this, I, I would love to hear some of your Christmas stories. I bet they're fun. I mean, I bet, you know, the, the time that, you know, grandma was eating, her teeth fell out in the stuffing or something. I mean, you know, you have all these great stories, uh, but, but even in, besides the funny ones, you have lots of tension, lots of pain that comes in. How I pray that this season, you would hear these words, life is too short, it's a mist, it's a vanishes. Here today, gone tomorrow, life is too short, my calling is too great to live life offended. I hope that you'll release that offense to God today. Bow your heads to me today. Father, I pray that you'll just help us today. God, so many times those, these offenses, they, they sneak up on us. We don't even know they're there. And then all of a sudden, boom, they're right there in front of us. Or God, some are more obvious and, and, and immediately we're hurt by them. Immediately, God, we're, we're crushed by them. But God, I believe today's word is a word that we all need to hear. It's a word of grace. It's a word of mercy. It's a word that, that today as it comes forth, may it transform us and challenge us, God, to not hold on, to, to not rehearse it, but to release it to you. God, I pray in the next few months of time, you would do a miracle by your Holy Spirit as only you can do. This morning, I know that some of you today, you're, dealing with an offense, you're dealing with something that's hurt you. I don't know if it's something that's been said, it could be history, it could be of the past, it could be of your childhood. And I don't want to, I don't want to rehearse it with you at all. But I do want to encourage you today, I believe that the Holy Spirit is here for you to, to hear the words of forgiveness, for you to release that to God. Some of you are going to say, well, I deserve or I own or I, I, I need justification I need justice done here. And God may say to you, you know what? You know what you need? You need to be forgiven and you need to forgive those who've wronged you. Stop eating the cancer. Stop allowing the poison. You're drinking the poison thinking it's going to get them. You're drinking the poison thinking they're going to hurt. No, it's only going to kill you. Stop. Release that to God and allow him to heal you. With a head bowed and eyes closed here this morning, you're here today and you say, you know what, I, there's something in my life, something that's been struggling. Would you right now, would you just raise your hands right there where you're at? I don't want to just pray with you before you go today. I just want to ask God to touch you, something that's been taunting you or haunting you and, and just been kind of eating away at you and agitating you and, and it's just been very, very hard. Maybe you carried it for years. Hands are going up. Maybe you carried it for years. I don't know what it is, but here's what I know. God is a God of grace and God is a God of mercy and God is a God of healing. No matter where you're at today, He loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to be free. He wants you to get rid of that ghost. He wants you to get rid of that ghost of, of that offense in your life. He wants you to find freedom today, but He only can do it by admitting, I am offended, but I need God to help me forgive and be released. 
with hands up all around this place. Father God, I pray that you touch, that you move, Holy Spirit. You touch the hearts, that you transform these lives that these hands represent. God, I don't know. I don't know what it is that they've gone through. I don't know the struggle that they have faced. But what I know is this. God, you can heal. (laughs) You can restore. I know that you can take away the bitterness. I know that you can bring about a peace even in the middle of the trials. I know who you are because, God, you are faithful. So, God, for every hand that is represented, the life that is there, whatever it is they're they're offended by, whatever it is that is cut deep, Lord, may they release it to you right now. No longer rehearse it, but release it to you. And God, it doesn't start, just start and stop here, but God, releasing is daily releasing it to you. So God, when those feelings of bitterness come up, when those feelings of offense happen again, you know what we do, God? We release it again to you. We say, God, take this. God, take this. I forgive. I forgive. I move on. I release this to you. I release this situation to you in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said,